Well, good afternoon, everyone. As well as the Health and Social Care Minister, today we also have Margaret Knight, the head of our Infection Prevention and Control Team, to speak to us about what we can all do to stay safe and keep our loved ones safe. Before that, and before I talk to you about changes in our measures, I would like to invite the Health and Social Care Minister to give us today's numbers. David. Thank you, Chief Minister. The total number of tests undertaken now stands at 4,167. The total number of tests completed stands at 4,126. That leaves 41 people awaiting results. The total number of new cases today is zero, meaning that we still have confirmed case number of 335. And the total active cases stands at 15. And thank you very much, David. Today saw a significant change in our society. Because of the actions we took as an island to suppress the spread of the virus and the seriousness with which you played your part, we were today able to open more of our retail sector. It was an important step in the gradual return to a more normal island. The retail sector accounts for about 4,000 jobs in the Isle of Man. Many people, we estimate about half, have of course been working throughout the pandemic, ensuring that we had the food and other essentials we needed. I would like to thank all those retail businesses that have worked with us to think, discuss and prepare for this. You understood why your businesses had to close and you have engaged with us to work out how to open up again in a way that is safe for your customers and for your employers, employees. Some businesses, big and small, have told us that they are not yet ready to open. That is OK. Right, not rushed, is the best way in the current situation. Now, there are some businesses that we are not yet ready to allow to open. These businesses that require a real proximity between people. They are often referred to as lifestyle businesses, hairdressers, beauticians, etc., Discussions with these businesses have already started and we hope to be able to bring them back online in the not too distant future. But we do want to let the opening of the wider retail sector bed in first. This staggered approach should help us space out the impact on areas of our island where there is a concentration of retail businesses. As our retail areas become busier, the risk of spread will increase. I'm afraid that is the reality of the situation. That is why it will become more important than ever to continue doing those things that you have done so well so far. You know the score. Wash your hands longer and more often than normal. When you are out, keep your distance and use hand sanitizer. If you think there are too many people in a shop, don't go in. Come back another time. And of course, if you or someone you live with are not feeling 100%, then stay at home. Now this is a good time to hand over to Margaret, who really has been at the front line. She and the team advise on infection prevention, including in critical areas like our hospital wards. They also go in to deal with areas that may have been exposed to the virus. So over to you, Margaret. Hello, thank you, Chief Minister, and good afternoon. As we enter into the next phase of the pandemic, and as the restrictions are being lifted, we need to remember that COVID-19 is still out there as we move towards our new normal. Following the Chief Minister's announcement, non-essential shops and other businesses may open if they're ready and can do so, and safely. Information has been published to advise retail and businesses on how to achieve this safely, as the customers and the workforce are permitted back to the premises. In order to control the spread of coronavirus and to keep the number low on the Isle of Man, it is essential that the community respect the precautions that business 
businesses put in place to help you stay safe. Coronavirus is mainly transmitted by coughing and talking. The coronavirus droplets can reach up to two meters until they drop onto surfaces. If you're in direct contact with a person within two meters, the virus can be transmitted to you. Once the viral droplets settle onto surfaces, they can survive for up to three days. So hand hygiene and social dis distancing are very key to preventing the transmission of coronavirus. Keeping the community safe and protecting our vulnerable people in the Isle of Man is at the forefront. Hand hygiene is the easiest, most effective way um, to prevent cross infection and is the cornerstone of preventing COVID-19. We sometimes are not aware of the surface we, surfaces we touch as we go through our daily lives. So washing your hands often and thoroughly for 20 seconds will prevent you from becoming infected. This can be achieved, as uh, the Chief Minister said, with using soap and water if you're inside, or if that's not available, alcohol rub can be used. Other hygiene methods which can help you prevent infection are stay at home if you're sick or if you develop coronavirus symptoms. Avoid close contact with people who have symptoms. Cough and sneeze into a tissue or your arm, not your hands. Use single-use tissues and dispose of them immediately. Wash your hands after coughing, sneezing or using tissues. And do not touch your eyes, your face, your nose, your mouth with unwashed hands because viruses can be transferred from your hands into your body. The second key prevention measure is social distancing. Staying two metres away from other people will prevent you from breathing in the virus directly from another person. This is why it's important to remain patient and respect the prevention measures that businesses have put in place for your safety. These fundamental infection prevention measures will reduce the transmission of coronavirus to help you, your family and your friends stay safe. I cannot express enough how unforgiving and relentless COVID-19 is. And as we move towards the new normal, we mustn't be complacent. We need to remain vigilant and patient in order to stay safe and continue to work together towards the new normal. Before I go, Minister, may I, I give an additional shout out to our infection control team. Thank you and stay safe. OK, well, thank you very much, Margaret. And uh, on behalf of myself, David and the Council of Ministers and all the team, can we thank you and your team for the really good and important job that you're doing to help the people of the Isle of Man stay safe. And I, I hope everyone takes on, boards, on board the um, comments that you've just given us. They are, it was such an important message for us at this time. As we move to a new normal for the island, hand washing and social distancing have to be part of our personal new normal. I would now like to go into the changes to the measures on Thursday last week, the Council of Ministers carried out its regular review of the measures we have in place. You may remember that there were a couple of areas on which we requested additional dis detail before reaching decisions. The Council of Ministers met on Saturday and was able to move these forward. I will take you through them in three sections. The same three sections that are in our roadmap document, they are health, society and economic. So starting firstly with health. On Saturday, the Council of Ministers was briefed on the Department of Health and Social Care's plans to resume those services that they had to pause to be ready to deal with COVID. It will be a steady and incremental resumption. As the Health and Social Care Minister and I have both said at this lectern, the resumption of these services will be far more complex than turning them off was. We endorse the department's approach and initial work is already underway in some areas. The Health and Social Care Minister will make an announcement and publish a summary of the plan later this week. This will contain a high-level view on what and when. 
but I do need to manage people's expectations. Not everything can happen immediately. We will do our best. But we need to balance this with the need to be ready to respond to COVID challenges for some time to come. People have been asking us about private therapies such as chiropractors, physios, sports massage, etc. Work is underway on this, but we are not quite ready to allow them to resume, and we will consider this further later this week. Moving on to society. As I told you last week, we are now ready to allow you to see people who are not part of your normal household. We wanted a model that would allow you the maximum amount of freedom to make decisions for you and your family. But we needed to balance this with a need to minimise risk to our wider community. We needed to do all of this with a model that would actually work for our island community and a way of life. Yes, a Manx solution for our Manx situation. We have decided that with effect from the morning of Wednesday the 20th of May, the rules will be as follows. For outdoors, you will be able to get together in groups of up to 10 people. These groups can be from different households. We are not going to be regulating how many households this can be. Now this is the same whether it's in your garden or out in public. In your garden, then the limit of 10 includes people who live there. You must keep two metres away from people who aren't from your household. Now people will ask why 10? And there are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, it is a number that our clinicians were comfortable with. Secondly, if someone from that gathering does subsequently develop COVID, 10 is a manageable number for fast contract tracing. Moving on to indoors. The clinical advice is that gatherings inside pose more risk than outside. We are inevitably closer together and the risk of touching shared surfaces is there. So what we are ready to allow is more limited than for outdoors. For the moment we are ready to allow you to have up to two people visit you inside your home at any one time. Both people visiting must be from the same household. We want you to continue to make the right decisions for you and your loved ones. You know who you are comfortable inviting into your house. You know if you have someone in your home who is vulnerable who has been, or has been told to shield. You know what the right decision is for your circumstances. We will be refreshing our guidance to give you information you need to make these decisions. But please remember, it is about space and time. The longer you stay, the more risk you are running. The closer you get to the person, the more risk you are both running. The European Centre for Disease Control recommends that you limit indoor contact to 15 minutes. It of course also recommends that you maintain two metres distance and hand washing on arrival. Why is this so important? Well, because the virus has not gone away. Just because you are free of symptoms, it does not mean that you are free of the virus. Although exact figures are debatable, one thing on which scientists do agree is that significant numbers of people will either have extremely light symptoms or even none at all. And just to state the obvious, if you or if anyone you live with is sick, stay at home, don't visit people or have visitors unless you are 100%. I know that from Wednesday many of you will want to go round and see that friend or family member that you haven't maybe seen in, in person for weeks. And maybe you will want to hug that person. But please think before you hug. Yes, take them some flowers, take some shopping for them. But think, how sure are you that you are not taking them the virus? As we start to stay out of your personal lives, you need to take responsibility 
for the decisions that are right for you and your family. Ultimately, it is your choice. Moving on to schools and nurseries, last week I announced that the Council of Ministers had agreed to the expansion of our hub schools to support those families who were returning to work in the construction and related trades. That started today. Thanks in no small part to the excellent work of all our teachers and school staff, this has gone very well. I am now pleased to be able to confirm that from Wednesday the 20th of May, nurseries will be able to extend their provision to people from the same sectors. I know that there will now be pressure from those who have returned to work in the retail sector to have school and nursery provision. This will be a focus of discussions with teachers and the nursery industry this week and I, or the Minister of Education, Sport and Culture, will update you when we have more details. Again, I need to extend my thanks to our teachers and school staff and those in the nursery sector. They continue to work with the Department of Education, Sport and Culture and how we deliver a careful and safe return to our children, to our schools and nurseries. This is of course in addition to the provisions already in place and I am very grateful to them. We have been asked about weddings. As soon as they are ready to do so, the General Registry will be able to take forward the administrative aspects of weddings. In terms of religious wedding ceremonies, we are content for these to take place with appropriate social distancing in place, but the final decision is for that place of worship themselves and the guidance being issued by their relevant religious bodies. Moving on to economic. For the moment we are not ready to make any other significant changes. We will continue to support office-based companies as they plan for a possible phased return soon and as they consider how to do so in a safe manner. For the moment we are grateful to all those who have enabled their staff to continue to work from home. We need you to keep doing this as much as possible, please. This has made a real difference in controlling the spread of the virus. The Council of Ministers will consider further later this week. At our meeting on Saturday, we considered in light of our changes on gatherings what other business we were ready to allow to return to work. With effect from Wednesday the 20th of May, domestic cleaners like commercial cleaners, can resume work as long as they can do so in a manner that is safe for them and the household where they work. We have also agreed that in line with the opening of retail, auction houses can open with immediate effect as long as they have appropriate social distancing measures in place. In the course of our discussions and reviews in, in the Council of Ministers, we have considered a number of activities that were previously prohibited. We have agreed that from the 20th of May, as soon as they are ready to do so safely, libraries can open to the public. A number of sports will be positively impacted by the changes to our measures on gatherings. The Department of Education, Sport and Culture will now be working with relevant associations and clubs to agree what this means for them. Some may need a change of regulation, so the changes may not be immediate. One that I can confirm today is that we are ready to allow campsites to reopen with effect from Wednesday the 20th of May. We are also content for those with motorhomes to travel around the island subject to the same rules as before the pandemic. On both camping and motorhomes, I should make clear that the gathering regulations do of course apply. If we see groups larger than 10, we will take action. Now that might be a lot to digest. It is a good time for me to pause and take questions. Thank you very much. And my first question goes to Alex Bell of the BBC. Alex. Thanks, Chief Minister. Um, thanks for the update there on the changes to the rules on gatherings. I just need some clarity on these changes to the rules on indoor gatherings, I think. Um, you say limit to 15 minutes. Is that a recommendation or a rule? You've also said social distancing 
we should think twice about. Is that a recommendation or a rule? Recommendations, Alex. We, we can't police this. This has to be done. People have to decide for themselves what is right for their situation. So the recommendation to people is that up to 15 minutes, there's little, there is a re greatly reduced chance of giving the disease to someone, coronavirus, or catching it. After that, you are increasing the likelihood of it. So we are, we are recommending, we are not making that as a rule. Um, I, I think it was uh, Queen Elizabeth I that said, I will not make windows into men's souls. We are trusting the Manx public to do what is right for them, for their situation and the people in that household. And it is up to the people. And if you don't want anyone to come to your household because you're nervous about this, don't let people into your house. You decide who you trust to come to your household who will protect your health and how you handle yourself in your household has to be taking on board our advice, but it is a recommendation, not a rule. That's understood, many thanks. Um, uh, another question for Margaret Knight, if you please. Okay, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mrs Knight. Can you, can you tell us just because the retail outlets on the Isle of Man have been given the option to open from today, is it fair to say that two weeks today, so in two Mondays time, we will know whether or not that was the right decision? Um, that's a very difficult question to answer at this time because we do not know um, how this will, this will pan out. Are you able to elaborate on that? Sorry, how, um, how from an infection control point of view, will, will, what, what I mean, measures will we be able to uh, measure the success of the retail outlets opening by? OK, the measures you're going to um, put in place um, should, if everybody keeps their distance, if everybody covers the cough, if everybody sticks to some of the suggestions and recommendation stations given, um, we shouldn't really see any more spread by that, that point. Um, so... If those rules are broken, obviously the spread is going to be far more um, enhanced. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for your, your questions, Alex. I suppose it really is, as I've stated, stated time and time again, the great Manx public have got us into this position where we can announce these changes. It's all about trust. We trust the people of the Isle of Man to follow the rules because they have been doing. They've got us into... In, into that position. Now, it wasn't that long ago that we allowed the construction and horticultural sectors back to work. That was four and a half thousand people in, in that sector. There's 4,000 in this sector, but we reckon 2,000 have already continued working with, with, with food retail. So there's probably maximum of 2,000 people that impact that this impacts. So it's a significantly reduced number than the big step we made with um, construction and horticulture, but it is still a significant step, especially with all the other changes that I've just announced. And we are reliant on the great Manx public keeping up their resolve to follow the hand washing, social distancing, and, and just being sensible, which they have showed that they're more than capable in bucket loads. Right, next question I have is for Rob Pritchard from 3FM. Rob, good afternoon. Faster Good afternoon, Chief Minister. Um, first question, again, just for clarity, if you don't mind. With regards to the announcement about allowing uh, 10 people to meet outdoors in a group uh, maximum, given this distancing, does it have to be, if you're meeting with a group of, let's say, 10, does it have to be the same 10 group of people you meet up with every time, or can that change? That can change. We're not saying it must be the same people. But it, it can change, but we are saying that that 10, if it's in your garden, has to include everyone in your household. So if there's five of you in your household, then only a further five people can come into your garden. And you must observe the social distancing and the hand washing before you get there and taking um, the gel with you, the hand sanitizer to, to clean your hands whilst you are there. Is, is that um, click, click clear for you, Rob? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Um, my second question, as you mentioned, the vast majority of the Manx public are incredibly responsible, as they've shown many times already. But there's going to be a lot more people out and about in either bigger groups. We're seeing our retail businesses come back. We may see just a, a greater volume of people out and about in general. 
I know you say, of course, the responsibility rests with all of us, but surely that's a much bigger monitoring operation to make sure people are adhering to them in the long run. Well, I suppose it is. It's an element of trust. Now, obviously, if, if the police come across a, a gathering of uh, more than 10 people, then obviously that is a clear breach. Um, so we're not saying you're not going to be prosecuted or, or on the spot fines for, for break breaches but we have come to a, a level where we feel that we can make these changes it really is up to people now you know I and and the rest of the accounts of ministers we don't want to be telling people what to do all the time that, that's not what we as politicians you know we're, we're there to help we're not to say thou shalt and the sooner that we as a as a government can let people get on with their lives then that's what we're looking for but it must be done in a safe responsible way because we do not want to see a spike in, in, in the number of cases now we're, we're in a good place with the number of cases we're in a good ca place with the number of uh, the availability in, in our hospital we're in a good place with the number of phone calls to our 111 um, hotline etc so that's why we feel with the advice from all those areas along with our law enforcement services we've been able to make these changes but it really is reliant on the people of the Isle of Man if they keep up the good work and carry on the way they have done then we will continue to be okay and we can look at further measures obviously we haven't been able to allow hairdressing nail salons beauticians etc but if this works then we will be able to announce further measures. So it really is down. It's in the people's hands now. We as a government have done our absolute best to make the decisions to protect the people of the Isle of Man. But I know the damage that can be done by people not seeing their loved ones. Social isolation is going to be a big killer in the future. I was lecturing on this um, long before coronavirus came along. So we need to make sure that we don't cause more damage by the measures we take than the um, illness it itself could cause. So this is a measured step forward. We are trusting the people of the Isle of Man to respect the rules on social distancing, hand washing, and if they do, then we will come through this well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. We now move on to Amanda Cashmore from Jeff the Mongoose. Amanda. Good afternoon, Chief Minister. First of my. These lockdown easing uh, measures will bring a lot of relief to people, but we could have to go back into tighter restrictions if there is a spike. Do you honestly think that it's feasible to ask the public to do that if needs be? And can you expect them to do it so willingly again? Well, yes, you, you factor all that in, Amanda, when you're making the decisions. You know, we, we, the Council of Ministers get a raft of evidence and details and we, we make the decisions based on all that evidence. And yes, the last thing I want to do is to have to reverse some of our decisions, tighten up and, and stop people being able to go to see their loved ones or in, in the gardens. Those would be the first two things that would obviously disappear if we see a spike. But it is up to the people. They have to decide if they follow the rules and regulations, we as administration will not have to um, reverse the, some decisions and um, go back to the distancing and lack of being able to see people. It really is in, in the great Manx public now in, in their hands to continue to get this right because we have got this right so far. Working together, the public and the government, it's gone exceptionally well for us. But we have to continue working together and people have to continue to follow the rules if we are to um, be able to take things further forward on the relaxation of events and activities that I'm sure, and businesses starting up again, that I'm sure the public want to see. It's in your hands. Just to clarify there, so you think, do you think that people will be so willing to go back into lockdown measures again? Well, no, I don't think they would once you've got used to something. But if it's a, if if and it's an if we see a significant spike in cases, that's something that we would have to do. But at some stage, you have to move forward and try to make the changes to make people's lives easier to live through whilst we all live through coronavirus 19. So it's this is a step forward. If if people follow the rules, we will be able to go forward safely for everyone if. I'm afraid people let their guard down and they don't follow the rules, then they themselves, their neighbour or their loved one could be infected by this. And we know the terrible consequences of what happens with vulnerable people getting this illness. So it really is in, in people's hands, Amanda. 
Uh, secondly, you mentioned that if you do not feel 100%, you should stay at home. The UK has added loss of taste or smell to its list of COVID-19 symptoms, which require people to self-isolate at home. Can we expect a change in the island's guidance to follow this? Yeah, I, I heard about that. And I know having had um, the coronavirus myself, you do lose an element of taste. I think um, we've got the health minister here who I was discussing this with earlier. So we might as well get his expert opinion on this. I'll just hand over Thank to you. David. Thank you, Chief Minister. Good afternoon, Amanda. Um, it's going to be the quickest answer of the day. The answer is yes, and it's already been done. The guidelines were changed here in the Isle of Man this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, before I move on to um, Paul, can I just say, I'll just clarify the 15 minutes when you go into someone's household with the same member of, of your household, two people. It is a guideline from us. We are stating that expert advice says that you are less likely to pass on the virus or receive the virus from someone in the first 15 minutes. If, so we are recommending that. So we are telling you what the latest guidelines are. If you choose to break that, that is your decision. You have to respect the people in the house or your visitors on the decisions that you want to make. So the 15 rules is an advice from us, 15 minutes. But if you choose to break to ignore that advice or extend it, that is your decision. We will not be prosecuting you for doing that. We are just giving you the facts. It is up to you to make that decision. As, as, as I said, I quoted, I think, um, Queen Elizabeth I about not making windows into men's souls. We are trusting the Manx public to make the mm -hmm. right decisions for their situation. They've, you, the Manx public, have done a fantastic job so far. And I and the Council of Ministers are trusting you to get it right, to continue getting it right. Thank you, Amanda. We're now with Paul Moulton from MTTV. Paul, thank you, Chief. Pastor you Mike. Hi, how are you doing? I, I'd like to speak to Mr Ashford first, please, and okay. then yourself, I think. OK, David. Good afternoon, Paul. Thank you, David. And also, thank you for your time at the weekend for our long in-discussion, which was found very interesting by lots of people. Um, we now have the, the news about the, the vaccine in the UK, and the, maybe 30 million of these will be produced for the UK. So we've now got a number, and we, we keep hearing from you that we get some of it. Do you now have a, a formula, and we will have that supposedly in September then? Who gets it, and will it be mandatory? Well, the first thing we have to say, Paul, is that, yes, the UK and the vaccine is looking hopeful, but it is still not guaranteed. There is not a certified vaccine on the market. The UK is preparing for if it is certified, but we have had false dawns like this before. Remember, it's only about a month ago that there was the vaccine emerging in the US that was going to be ready by now. There was stories back in March about the potential for a vaccine around about June, July time that have come to naught so far. Um, so we have to be very careful. So while the UK is saying if this vaccine works out, if it passes its tests, if it works, then that is the number of vaccines they will hope to be able to get very quickly. We would then be able to negotiate with NHS Supply to get a percentage of that, but those negotiations will only take place once we know there is a vaccine to negotiate ah, over. So you At don't the moment, have a magic formula? to say uh, out of the 30 million, you'll get X amount. So I mean, we'll get an X amount. Know. It'll be done normally on a population basis. Um, Can but, I yeah. but we know, like I say, at the moment, we've got to be very clear uh, people shouldn't be getting their hopes up at this stage because there is not a certified vaccine available. It's still very early days. But you're a man with a plan. Let's suppose it happens. Who gets it and would it be mandatory? You know, it, would it be like the old people? Would it be front, obviously, you know, front line of... Uh, People what? So we would look first of all at the most vulnerable in our society and we would be offering it to those. Um, obviously key workers would form a part of that, but those are the two key that would be part to our testing strategy. I'm not okay. personally and never have been in favour of mandatory vaccination against people's wishes, um, but you know, obviously if a vaccine became available for COVID-19, I would hope that and it was available to people, I would hope most sensible people would take up the option. Thank you, David, very much. Can I have the Chief back, please? Hi, Paul. Hello there. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to see the interview I've got. I know other media have also talked to this gentleman about this funeral that he'd like to attend. His, his mother died in the Isle of Man and, and uh, he's been refused permission to come back. It's a very sad tale. I mean, he, he cannot get back and he needs to support his father. He's asked 
on permission it's been declined you, you say using common sense in all these things now is this one that's just fallen through and, and maybe needs looking at again well i know currently paul we are looking to see how we can allow this type of situation to, to happen um, we have to say that in, in the uk sadly people were dying and the family couldn't get to see the loved one dying in hospital alone we need to make sure that we, we that we come up with a a solution on how people can come from the uk to a funeral or to see a, a, a dying member and then go back without infecting the isle of man um, people and obviously if there is um if they know someone's got five, six weeks, then maybe they can come over, isolate for 14 days to protect the people of the island. So we are working on solutions on this, Paul, but it, it, it's heartbreaking. It, it, it truly is to be in this position. I know I, I have a friend's funeral on Wednesday and um, I can't go to the funeral. Um, hopefully I can park uh, from a safe distance from their property and the funeral cortege will drive past and I will pay my respects. That's about the best that I can do um, for Jeffrey Quirk's funeral. I've known him for 50 all my life, and um, I can't go to it. So I, I get that, but we have to do what's right and safe for the people of the Isle of Man. So yes, and, our heart yeah. goes out. To, there's more than this gentleman in the situation. Yes. We are working on a system with our medics on how we can, if possible, allow these people to come over to see their loved ones before they pass or attend a funeral, but we have to make sure it's in a safe way for all the people off, off the Isle of Man. It would be dreadful, wouldn't it, if a member from the UK came over, went to a funeral, didn't know they had the coronavirus and accidentally gave it, unintentionally of course, to an elderly relative who was at the funeral, and before we know it, we've got a further catastrophe on our hands. So. Yeah, he he has offered to to do anything that is required, and of course, at the same time, you see that I don't know three hundred people coming in in a month of last month alone, just as you know, with special exemptions. It must be quite hard when they they see the, the people can't. Yeah, come can in I can I just have... step step in there straight away, Paul? People bandy this three four hundred number on time and time. It is totally misleading. The number of key workers that come in and go to their house, Paul, is probably forty fifty. The rest are people who are on the steam packet, who are delivering freight onto the port. They're getting the mail out of the plane, putting <coughs> it at the airport and then going back on the plane. Or they're one of ten named drivers who can bring over the oxygen cylinders to Noble's Hospital and then go back. We are not allowing three, four hundred people just to, you know, waltz up to their houses totally unchecked. And, and do whatever they want. And, and this has been time and time again, people are using this 3400 number. When I've time and time again, I've said, look, that is not the situation. 90% of these people are not setting foot out of our ports, whether that's the airport or the um, our, our Douglas Harbour port. So I just want to clarify that. Okay. It's not big numbers that are of key workers. Okay, and, and just... You know, this one gentleman and, and you say many other people will, will, will when will we be able to look at this again and maybe make some changes and give some reassurance to people who are losing loved ones and can't say that final goodbye yeah well we're working on it now Paul I, and it, there's a genuine wish I mean I, I, I you know I hope no one thinks that the council of ministers are, are an in, in you know inhuman group of people we are very caring people we want to do what's right but equally looking after the 85,000 to me has always been more important than, and put, than putting their health at risk to please one person, no matter how heart-wrenching it is. But please have my assurance that if our medics can come up with a safe way for us to enable people to come and see a family member, then that's something we of course will do once we're reassured that there is a safe method of doing it. And if it means them isolating for 14 days and then seeing their loved one and then leaving the island, then we'll of course do our utmost to help out there. And we'll be making further announcements um, late, later this week on, on other issues that where we're trying to ease that situation. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul. Right, we now, last but not least, is Sam Turton from Isle of Man Newspapers. Good afternoon. Fast and I, Sam. Sam. Um, I just want to start, we've been shown a staff bulletin that was issued to bus drivers which says that there's no maximum number of people on the buses, but they're a bit concerned about as more businesses open up, more workplaces open up, more people will be travelling. 
What has the council members considered in terms of encouraging social distancing on uh, the buses and for the protection of both passengers and bus drivers? Well, obviously, we provided um, PPE equipment for all our staff. If they, it's up to them personally whether they want to use that equipment. Um, that's their choice. Um, so face masks have been provided for all our drivers. It's cashless, so you can either pay by your credit card or, or the um, card, the bus card, and I'm struggling to remember the name of it, pay and go, or whatever, to... Um, so it, so it remains contactless. The buses are, are are cleaned on a regular basis, and I'm sure the management of the um, transport division from DOI will be looking at saying, right, well, we can't have people jammed onto buses, so if we see an increase in the number of people on buses, then we're going to have to do extra um, runs of, of buses to ensure that... Um, less people are you know to spread the number of people on on the buses i'm sure they will come up with 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 a, with a plan it's obviously something that we've been aware of because we started off with with a sunday service and now we're starting to increase the number of of services that are provided with the bus routes based on the number of passengers so the safety of a our staff driving the, the buses is absolutely key but also the safety of the people using the buses so that's something that will be looked at all the time as the numbers increase i'm sure the next time minister harmer is here giving a talk from doi i'll, I'll make sure that he gives a chat sam on that very topic just to reassure people Thank you. And just secondly, in terms of um, people visiting, up to 10 people visiting um, an outside area, a garden, for instance, just um, one of the questions we've got through on that pretty quickly was, does that mean in terms of, um, from a social aspect, people could organise for next weekend in the weather is suitable, a uh, barbecue, for instance, is that the sort of thing that would be suggestible under the health conditions that is okay for people to do? Well, it's, it's feasible, Sam. I just want to clarify. If you live in a household of five, let's say there's five of you, and you wanted to have a barbecue, you could only invite five people to attend. So that's ten in total. But if you're doing it in the confines of your garden, you have to count everyone that's in the household bef as part of the ten, and then you can invite people. But as long as people, before they go, they wash their hands, they feel 100%, so you can't invite just anyone yourself have got to feel confident that the people that you're inviting are going to be responsible enough to be straight with you and say well actually I haven't been feeling well this last couple of days got a slight temperature I better stay at home you have to make sure that they wash their hands there's hand sanitizer there and they do keep their two meter distance from one another if people are sensible then this sort of activity can happen but you have to be sensible at the end of the day you are putting your own health at risk the health of your neighbours, your friends and your loved ones and vulnerable elderly relatives at risk if you get this wrong. So we are trusting people to get it right. The Manx public have done a fantastic job so far. I see no reason why they can't be trusted with these latest measures. But I'm re that's why we had Margaret to reinforce the message here today about keeping your distance, making sure your hygiene is exceptionally good, your hand hygiene coughing into your arm rather than into your hand, single-use tissues. If people follow all this advice, we will be okay. If people abuse it, then the last thing I want is to have to roll back in three weeks' time because we've got a major problem. We are genuinely, as a Council of Ministers, trying to make the situation for people bearable whilst we all live with the long-term um, coronavirus situation. And, but it really is in the hands of the Manx people. You know, we as the Council of Ministers have steered it as safely as possible for everyone, but we have to trust, and we do trust, the, the, the great people of the Isle of Man. Sam. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Right, so I know that for many people, the changes we have made in gatherings will come as a huge relief. You will now be able to see your nearest and dearest, but please, please, only do so in a way that is not going to put their health at risk. The less contact you have and the less time you are there will mean less risk. It's simple. I know that for some, this may lead to an increase in anxiety. People need to continue to do what is right for them, what they are comfortable with. 
If you don't want people in your house, that's okay. If you don't want to go into a shop because you think it is too crowded, that's okay. It is through the commitment, grit and determination of the great Manx public that we are in the position we now find ourselves. As we move forward, government cannot micromanage your daily lives and your homes. We will need you, more and more, to make the right decisions for you, your family and our island community. The future is in your hands. Thank you all very much.